All right, so to calculate beta for a stock, first you want to open the beta calculation worksheet that's found on your HS Student Global Drive. Um, and when you open it up, you'll find dates dating back from 2003 to 2012, I think it's December, yes, December 2012 for the S&P 500. Now you want to get as many data points as you can, but we're going to just go back from 2003 to 2012. Now if your stock starts um, say in 2006 or 2007 you can't find data previous to that because it's, an, it's a newer stock that just went public it's okay just make sure you put the data in the right place and then you can delete the entries. Um, de delete all the, the dates in the S&P 500 before up to that point and then you can go from there so you just have less data points to deal with. Uh, so first thing you need to do is you need to get your stock um, and what we're going to do is you're going to go to you're not going to go to Google Finance this time you're going to actually go to Yahoo Finance and you're going to uh, type in the name of the stock um, I'll go to Nike and then you're going to go to historical prices and again make sure you're in Yahoo not Google and you want to go to monthly and you want to type in it's January 1st 2003 to December 31st 2011 and again make sure you want to hit monthly then click get prices and as your prices are set you want to scroll down to the bottom and click on the download to spreadsheet and this is what you have so again we want to get rid of the high low close volume all those get rid of those okay then you want to select the range that you have now don't highlight the columns so select them all while we're down to line 109 okay select all those and you're just going to flip them again so you're going to click data sort data sort and you want to sort by the date oldest to newest and click OK and there they are okay so then you want to just highlight the prices for the open copy them and you want to paste them in your stock sheet right there. Now if you want to change the formatting on them you can, you don't have to. Move that over. And there you go. Okay. Now you're going to calculate the return just like you did before. So down on the second one you can click equals. Now you, the, the X is the S&P 500. Okay. So you want to do, first of all, set it up in parentheses and then sell B4 minus B3 close parentheses and divide it by sell B3. You should come up with negative 2.74 percent then you want to click and drag that down all the way and you can even drag it over one to get the percent return for your stock. Okay. Now you want to have all your data selected and you want to click data excuse me back that up insert and you want to click on scatter and you can click on the first one Okay, and that's what pops up and then what I want you to do is right click and you want to move the chart, let's move it to a whole new page, a new sheet, let's make it chart 2 or chart 1, whatever it comes up with, that's fine. Okay. And then if you right click on one of the data points, we want to get a trend line here because the trend line will be basically what's called a best fit line. So it draws a line in relation to all of these data points right here. Okay. Um, and then with your trend line, if you right click on it, 
you can go to format trend line and then these two values down here are the values that you need. You need to display the equation and display the R square. Okay. So here's your equation, here's your R square. Let me if I can zoom in so you guys can see that a little bit better. There you go. So as you see your best fit line there. Now there's a couple things. First of all, um, the slope. Well, I says y equals 0.7663x. 0.76 is going to be your beta, um, because that's the slope of the best fit line. So 0.76 is your beta. Um, now, if you look at, if you go back to Nike, let me see a second. Let me back out of that. You'll notice the beta is 1.05. So we're getting from our trend line here 0.76. So actually, that's pretty close. Um, normally, for a lot of the kids, it's not really that close. But that one's actually pretty good. Um, and then your R square value is 0.18. So we can say that we're about 18% confident that that is correct. Um, so that's not very good, but with the limited amount of data points that we have, that'll work. Um, now, one thing I do want to mention is if you notice, there's a data point way down here. And that's when actually the stock split at some point. Um, and it went two for one. So if we, we can get rid of that point, because that point's kind of dragging down our data, and that's really a, a value that we don't need. So if I go to the chart and I highlight it, or if I just scroll over it, it'll say it's negative 4.33% uh, and negative 49.57%. So if I go back to my chart, and my data, and I find that one, like I said, it'll be pretty easy to find right here. If you just delete that, if you delete those two, it'll change your chart. And then now the beta actually becomes oops there we go now the beta actually becomes 0.86 which is actually a lot closer to 1.05 as to what the beta is supposed to be and your R square your confidence goes from 18 percent it goes to about 37 so it's getting a lot better than what it was so if you can delete some of those outlier points uh, now you might be able to delete maybe this one um, and this one way down here. You can delete those and play around with it and then you'll see your confidence interval will increase and hopefully your beta will get a lot closer to what it actually is. So that's how you, def that's how you find out and that's how actually a beta is calculated for an actual stock.